Hello my dear little girls and boys. Today we are going to learn another interesting literature lesson. The Swiss Family Robinson. Chapter 4. Back to the Ship. Let's refresh our minds from Chapter 3. The Baby Monkey. Children, can you remember the things Mr. David Robinson and Fritz found from the little wood in the island? Yes, they found gods, sugarcane, coconuts, the baby monkey. Back to the ship. Chapter 4. Now let's see the characters of this chapter. Mr. David Robinson, he is the narrator and the father. Mrs. Robinson, she is the mother. Fritz, the elder son. Ernest, the second son. Jack, the third son. And little Francis, the younger son. As soon as Mr. David Robinson woke up, he said to his wife, Mrs. Robinson, There are so many things to be done that it's difficult to know which to do first. Then Mrs. Robinson said, The first thing to do is to go and bring those animals from the ship. You and Fritz go. The rest of us will look for a place to build a home. So Mr. David Robinson said to Mrs. Robinson, we must stay on the ship all night. Tell Ernest to climb up that high tree and tie a piece of cloth there as a flag. If there is any danger, pull the flag down. Mrs. Robinson said, You must put up the light in the ship. Then I'll know that you have got there safely. Then Mr. David Robinson said, All right. So, Mr. David Robinson and Fritz reached the ship quite easily. The animals were in good health and had enough food. Then Mr. David Robinson put up a light as he had promised his wife, Mrs. Robinson. Then they had some food and went to sleep. They woke up very early next morning and spent some time gathering together things which would be useful to them on the island. Fritz said, We must have plenty of gunpowder and shot so that we will be safe against wild animals and any enemies. Then Mr. David Robinson said, we must think of the present. What do we need now for these next few days or weeks? We must take more sailcloth to help us to make a home. And we must think of food. What food is there on the ship? Then Fritz said, I've seen a barrel of butter and there's the ship's bread and salted meat. If it isn't spoiled by sea water, but what will we do when the bread's used up and the butter's bad? Mr. David Robinson said, Let us think of the present time. We have enough troubles to think of without thinking of troubles which may come later. Perhaps a ship will come and take us away. But Mr. David Robinson was wrong. People should always be prepared for whatever may come. So they made some foolish mistakes and did not bring back things that they badly needed later. These mistakes could have cost them their lives. Gathering together these things filled the day and they had to spend a second night on the ship. They woke up late next morning. 
Fritz made ready some breakfast. Mr. David Robinson found the captain's telescope and through it he could see Mrs. Robinson come out of the tent and look towards the ship. Then Mr. David Robinson took down the light and put up a white flag to show that they were all right. Then Mr. Robinson asked as they sat at breakfast, Now Fritz, how can we take those animals to the land? Then Fritz said, We can't put them on the boat. They would be too heavy. Can we make another boat? No, it would be too far too big. What can we do? The pig can swim, but the cow and the sheep and the goats can't swim so far, nor the donkey. Mr. David Robinson said, No, we can't make a boat big enough. There are a lot of barrels on the ship, enough for such a boat, but it would take too long to make one. Then Fred said, Barrels, let's make each animal its own boat. Let us tie barrels on the animals to hold them up in the water and pull them behind the boat. Then Mr. David Robinson said, Well, that may be possible. Let's try first with one animal and see if it can be done. So, they fixed a barrel on each side of a ship and put it into the sea. It went down, down and Mr. David Robinson thought it would never come up. Then at last he saw its head above the water and it began to swim. When it was tired, it stopped swimming and stayed there, held up by the barrels. Fritz jumped down into the sea and tied a rope to the sheep and so they brought it back into the ship. They worked very hard and for a time thought that it would not be possible. The pig and the donkey were the most difficult. Fritz said, perhaps we should leave them. The cow and the goats are what we need most. So they tied barrels to the cow and the goats and then they tried again to do to the pig and the donkey. The donkey seemed to understand but the pig gave them a lot of trouble. Then Fritz said, the pig is very fat. Perhaps its fat will keep it up on the water. And pigs are good swimmers. So they didn't tie barrels to the pig. So at last they got all the animals into the water. They gathered up the ropes to pull them if they needed help. They got into the boat and put up the sail. There was a strong wind and they could soon see the little bay. When they reached the shore, Mr. David Robinson cut the ropes of the animals and they came up onto the shore, glad to be set free from their barrels. Mrs. Robinson and the boys came running to meet them. Mrs. Robinson was surprised to see all the animals, even the pig, brought safely to the land. Mrs. Robinson asked, How did you think of this way of doing it? Then Mr. David Robinson said, I didn't think of it. I couldn't see any way of doing it. This was Fritz's plan. Rule number four, make smart choices. Let's practice. Page number 70. Children, can you answer these four questions? First one, who went back to the ship? 
Two, how did they show that they were on the ship? Three, why did they fix barrels to the animals? Four, which animal had no barrels fixed to it? I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Please write the student note of chapter 4. Goodbye and see you soon and stay safe.